Hey guys, Adam Savage here in my cave with a one day build that involves one of my favorite tools. This is a portaband, a portable bandsaw. My first one was in Milwaukee. I bought about 10, 12 years ago and I love that thing so much. Uh, DeWalt makes one, this is their big one and I love it and it's cordless. Ah, oh, I, I love cutting through metal, through aluminum, through even wood and steel and all sorts of other stuff with this. Uh, it is a fabulous tool. Uh, and when I found out that DeWalt made a cordless one, I got it and that rendered the corded one I have uh, kind of to like deep storage. But I was in deep storage recently and I saw this and I thought, I think I can make that a useful tool. And so today's one day build is I'm going to build a stand that turns this into a small upright portable bandsaw. And I believe I have an idea for being able to adjust the speed control on the trigger here. That's pretty neat. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so the parameters of the build are, are pretty straightforward. I, I think I'm going to support the whole upright portable bandsaw on this, the table here. So this is the little guide that you butt up against to cut stuff. Um, I am going to replace this with a larger chunk of some quarter inch aluminum that I have. Oh, ooh, not that piece. This is knife making aluminum. Uh, and I am going to then build a stand around it. I still have to make the blade easily replaceable. I can't build a closed box because that would mean I'd have to take the whole thing apart. Um, ease of changing the blade is really important to me for this project. That and speed control. Um, the fact is the supporter bands are terrific, but sometimes for really small things, they can be quite difficult because you're manhandling this like 20 pound object trying to cut a little tiny thing. So having it upright is gonna be a really useful addition to this shop. I just have to make sure that maintaining the tool is as easy as using it. Um, so I think the first thing to do is to cut a piece of aluminum uh, and figure out the shape it wants to be, actually, the other order, is to figure out the shape my piece of aluminum wants to be, cut it, mount it, and then start to build the infrastructure around it. I like using corrugated cardboard to figure out templates because it's super cheap. The price of failure is zilch. So often when I receive some super big cardboard boxes and any kind of shipping stuff, I'll cut them apart just to have some scraps in the in my material storage rack. I don't really need, I don't really need these flaps back here, except if I make a, all right. Get 
aluminum I need. See about changing the blade. So if this was missing, Ah, okay. So this could be this. That could go to the base, and it doesn't get in the way of this. And that's a nice secondary support to this and this. And then my handle for adjusting speed control. And go here. There, yes, much better. I was just going on the wrong side of the thing. Sorry about that. Okay, so that lives here, and you live there. My whole goal is that I'll have a switch on the front here for turning it on, and this would be for Am I screwing myself that way? I kind of want an unbroken cable, right? Because I don't know what I'm supposed to cut. Well, if I'm cutting something that's going right here, I'm cutting something that's going right here. Am I ever? Nah, we can try that. I, I like the idea of speed control that's adjustable. So that's the table. That's it's like this. Then the question is, how high is the table? And the answer is nine inches high. Nine inches off the ground. Nine inches table. And the base is ten and a half by ten and a half. Wow. Really nailed that one. And I think it can be literally that big with this sticking out. Nine inch table height. Um, Okay, 
First things first, I gotta build the table. Mount it to this and then begin to build the base that supports the table. This is gonna be a nice piece of kit. I've been wanting this set up for a long time. First up, a 10 and a half inch square of aluminum uh, as my main table base. And then a 10 and a half inch square of plywood. Not many people realize that you can quite easily cut aluminum on most table saws. Uh, the blade has carbide tips uh, and it generally does pretty great. It's loud, you'll want to wear hearing protection, but here we go. All right, now it's time for me to transfer my pattern to the aluminum and I think no. All right, I think I got it. First up, I gotta swap out the jaws on my vise so that they can grab this big piece of aluminum. The vise jaws don't open up to 10 and a half inches, but, um, but they do swept out so I can actually get 10 and a half inches of throw out of them. It's one of the cool features of a good machine vise. And I, uh, I recently tuned this puppy back to, back to health. I took it all apart, <clears throat> put it back together, cleaned everything inside, adjusted the persuasions. It's a, it's a nice vise now. But now that I put these on the outside, I should be able to uh, I should be able to grab this piece of aluminum quite easily and make the cuts I need to make on it. Actually, part of me thinks. Wait a second. I might have to. Yeah, I am because I got to get through there. Cool, I gotta remove this jaws and put it back on the original. Little bits of sharp steel, ow. Okay. Yes, good. Got my, my right. I may also grab it like this, just to have real stability and no vibration. I have come, I have come to the, uh, there we go. I've come to the clarity in later life about how important it is to clamp stuff on, on my mill really well, yeah. 
It, uh, it just makes such a difference when you clamp stuff down tightly, man. It is the real deal. It's really, it's really freaking awesome. So, that over there. This over here. I can get some one, two, three blocks for support. And those, yep. Then that guy, yeah, awesome. Look at that. Great. Um, I used to avoid clamping. I used to be like you. I used to avoid clamping. The fact is, is like when you clamp something down, man, life is good. Good salt, like it's just, you know, you don't have to hear your mill go and complain. Your mill really wants to tell you about how you're abusing it. <laughs> All right. Now I'm gonna make this uh, hole for the main blade out of a inch and three quarter OD Milwaukee hole saw. Um, a hole saw for metal, you say. Yes, I say. Hole saws can do all sorts of wonderful things. Just ask anyone who builds roll cages inside of cars, and they will tell you about hole saws' abilities with mills to do notching and all sorts of remarkable things, as long as you are going slow on the spindle speed and using lots of cooling fluid. Um, but I'm going to stop having you look at my pretty face, and we'll get a close-up on this so you can watch it happening. It's really important that you use a lot of cooling fluid and go slow. Uh, instead of using the quill feed to go into the hole, I was actually using the knee to come up to it. And each time I get chatter, I slow, add more cooling fluid. And the fact is, is when you're cutting metal right, you can feel the machine curling it up and moving that metal. You can feel that it's happening in the right way. Nice, and freedom tastes of reality. All right. All right, um, I don't just want a hole here. I actually want a little lip because I'm going to machine a plastic insert that sits in here, uh, just like on a normal bandsaw. It might even be brass. So I'm gonna use this boring bar here, again, very slowly with lots of cooling fluid and it's gonna be noisy AF. Uh, in order to uh, in order to achieve this again, I'll be bringing it close and then using the Z axis down there the uh, the knee to bring the work up to the boring bar to bring the work up to the boring bar rather than push the boring bar down into the work. So locking. So I reground this boring bar just a little bit, uh, and that worked. I made a lip here. Now I am going to bring the boring bar in and clean up the inside of that hole. 
Boring bars are really unpleasant. I, I don't love using them. They're just, they're really hard to get right. Uh, yeah, there we go. Just a few thou, that's all I'm gonna take. I'm gonna tighten that up. I'll tighten that up. Okay, and we'll bring it down and then there we go. Uh, right now I'm turning the brass insert that will fit into this hole. This should be fairly quick work. This is a two and a quarter inch piece of brass. I need to turn it down to 2.145. One of the ways I do that is turn it down just a little bit. See what that measurement is. And then I zero out my DRO and get it from there. So 2.145 is the goal. The current width is 2.24, mm, 95 thou, 95 thou. So I want to come in Yeah, let's do 90 thou. We'll see if that gets us pretty close. <laughs> 90 thou is totally reasonable with some brass and a sharp tool. Let's see where we're at. All right, so now we're, yeah, we're three thou over. I'm gonna make it, ah, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go in 10 thou. One. So, that fits my hole. Be able to bring it right over here. Pop right in. And it does not quite. Yeah. Oh wait, wait, wait. Oh, I got some burrs going on in there. Okay. Ooh. Uh, sorry, I finished the lathing off camera because I was kind of getting frustrated. But here is my brass plug. And here is the hole it's going to go into. And you ready for an episode of Oddly Satisfying? Oh, that is lovely. I got to take care of that little pip. But that is great. So on to the next part. All right, I'm gonna need to actually cut the uh, aluminum and what am I gonna use? A porter band. I think you'll see why I love this thing so much. Let's do this. Yes.
go. Oh. Okay, that got us most of the way there. I'm gonna fix that up in the belt sander. Now, I've got the interesting challenge that this is the uh, effective table of the, of the porta band and I pulled the two screws without moving it. And now what I wanna do is I wanna get this thing into its very, very close to final position because I want to pick up that template with my, yeah, with my, uh, sorry, with my new table, so I can transfer the whole pattern. And that has to be really exact. So I'm gonna use this can't twist clamp. No. Nothing's moved yet. And if I do this correctly, yes, that is my whole pattern. That's great. Good, good. All right, so now I take some transfer punches. two holes. So if I countersink them to receive these screws, I should be able to mount this table in and we are like well on our way. So I need two quarter inch holes in those. Is that correct? Two quarter inch. All right. I drilled those holes and countersunk them on the drill press and they're doing nicely. So I'm going to drop this guy here. And then I'm gonna have a whole new way of holding on to this porta band. And it'll be time soon. Oh yeah, there we go. To uh nice. I love it when stuff lines up. I need a little portable Allen that fits that. So one of the nice things about having a drawer full of extra Allen wrenches is that when you want to allocate one for a new tool, you just can. You can just pull it out, say, yeah, that five millimeter wrench now lives with this tool. Oh, so great. And then that drops in there. Oh, so sexy. Right, so now, Let's pull some stuff off this thing, shall we? We don't need all this stuff on here. I don't need this, this handle. We can get rid of that. Okay, one part. And then there's this stuff down here. Yeah, there's that. So let me get a big Phillips for that. Wow, I'm kind of short in the big Phillips department. Ooh. Oh, that's Torx. <clears throat> Hold on. Let's see. Ah, that's it. That's my answer to why I don't use Torx. I just, like, I don't want to go find the thing. Do I have to go find the thing every single time? The Phillips, there's like two sizes, really. Okay, I mean, I know there's like two crying out loud. Okay. Okay. So, let's see here. Now we have, right. So, I'm going to, next step is to make my platform with a couple of uprights 
so I can start to house this thing. And I wrote down how tall it is, right? Nine inch table height, yes, great. All right, you know how much I love my stapler, so I'm going to assemble this base using my stapler and some wood glue. This will be the right side of this little dude. All right, so let's uh, get aired up here. Ah, oh, nice and flush, I love it. Now I need to make some, a little bit of assessment here. All right, now before I attach that to this, I need to do a little assessment here and make sure I'm getting it right. So this guy will live, yeah, this guy will live like that. And now we already have a good portion of the structure of our upright porta band going, but I want, I want, to uh, have a mechanism for the, uh, I want to have a mechanism for my speed control. And I actually, it looks like, it looks like, yeah, it looks like I don't have to do anything special over here because the mechanic happens over here. And that's great. So what I really need here is a piece that comes up from here and two bolts that go in there. Yeah, okay, so. Um, so I need a piece. Yeah. This is it's almost like this, like this wide. And roughly this high. I think, I think I can assemble this this way. I think I can do that. Yes, I can. So I'm going to. A lot of woodworking lately. I've been getting, been finding the woodworking to be very healing. And the, you know, it's funny. It took me a long, it, I had to become a better machinist to become a better woodworker. That's the funny thing about this is like, you start out by thinking that wood is a forgiving medium, and I'm here to say I think wood is a lot less of a forgiving medium than plywood is. I think plywood forgives our petty trespasses way more than wood does. Yeah. But there's a way in which becoming a better machinist made me more precise and exacting about my work. Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to cut out this guy. I don't need it to be wider than that.
Okay, so I've done a little work here. Uh, I've added some countersunk holes around the perimeter so that I may attach this guy to this guy and know that they are one and true. And that's the next thing I'm gonna do is uh, pre-drill those and get them in. So, God, once I get this, we're gonna be like most of the way there for structure and then it's just wiring and celebrating. Okay, so let's see here. Let's get this one in first. Nice and straight. Wait, wait. Ta, I forgot to drill the thing that to go to the blade can't get in unless I cut that. Silly. Order of operations, man, is everything. Order of operations. Like, I wish someone had said that to me in the beginning of my career. That order of operations mattered so much to so many different factors. Just like, what is the order you're gonna cut those things? Order of operations is just almost never neutral. You know what I'm saying? Now I want this cut to be fairly straight. Let's see if I can achieve that. Let's see. Now, at the same time I'm doing this, I should technically pop this guy in and cut it as well. Let's try some of this waterproof tape and see if that doesn't help us by holding it all together. I am pulling that way, right? Yeah, I am. So I'm going to pull past center. Right. I gotta be pleased with that. Before I do the final assembly on this, I'm actually gonna spend some time with some sandpaper, cleaning this guy up a little bit, making it look nice. Oh, I know what to take, yes. I don't need this thing to be machine flat, but I mean, to be realistic, to be realistic, I don't need this thing to be machine flat, but oh, it's really nice. Get it close, yeah. Ah, oh, scotch bright. Word on the street is I'm getting a new workbench soon. It's not gonna rattle around like this. That'll be nice. Schedule panel. First up, it's these guys. I'm very excited about this. I mean, we're still not, you know, still a little bit far from being done. But once I get this attached to this and I put the blade in and show that I can actually remove take out and utilize a blade out of here. Those are both not coarse threads. There we go, that's the one I wanted. Yep. All right, actually, before I put in all the rest of the screws, let's make sure I can change blade. That was nice.
plagues and germs. Let's power this guy up. All right. Ooh, ooh. What? I didn't know there was a light. That is so cool. All right, let's see here. It's tracking nicely. Yeah! Oh, you deserve a close-up of this. I am filthy. All right, I like it, but I still have a little bit of movement here. So I'm gonna add in some support right here. And I'm gonna use these. I gotta figure out what screws those are, mark them across here, drill some holes, put this in, screw it in, and then I'll staple it from the bottom once it's screwed in. And then I've got a perfect position. All right, your M5 screws. Isn't that ironic? Ooh, look at how low I am in the frame. Here, let's do this. All right, they were um, they were metric screws, and I found some, uh, and I've got some washers for them. It is you don't have to have a full storehouse of metric screws, but you should buy one of those assortments from, you know. germs. There we go. So let's, uh, oh. yep, that doesn't blew through and it's gorgeous. Lovely. So happy. So happy. Let's put some rubber feet on it, shall we? I have a rubber feet drawer, not those, these. Yep. One, two, three, four. When I take rubber feet off of something, it goes into this container. Yeah, it's great. You can never have too many rubber feet in your shop. Yep. Okay, so now we are in business. That is great. All right, now I need to somehow, yeah. I need to wire this so it has a switch. I think I'm gonna put it should the switch go? I, I kind of don't want to put it proud of the outside of the machine because if this stores into a corner, that switch gets beaten up. So it's kind of like, it's almost like I kind of want a, a little, a little doohickey like this. I could still, I mean, I don't mind seeing the mechanics of this. Uh, let me see what switches I've got. I have a few place for switches in my shop. Uh, it's a long-term project, getting everything to have its own correct home. But in my electronics box, I have a nice, a nice one of some of the more weird switches I've got. So I could go with a big toggle like that, but I'm more inclined. Some radio shacks. I'm more inclined to go with something a little lower profile. These rockers are I don't mind them, but I have to offset them and inset them and I'd rather not. Feeling kind of lazy today. That's that's not bad. 
I mean, certainly feels authentic, but that doesn't feel like a power tool switch. Oh, those are all momentary. Right, whatever this is, it's got to handle 120 volts. It's three position, I don't know that. Jesus. Some of this is overflow. I suppose I could use one of these guys, yeah. Uh, yeah, I could embed it in an aluminum plate. Yep, screw that to the end. That's gonna take a little while. Let me take a look at my other switch location. You see how this can become such a, such an ongoing battle. It's like a whip in a chair with a lion. I forgot to turn it off. Uh, one of the other switch locations I have are some of my electronics drawers. I've got a nice one right here. Oh, you can't see that. Let's try this. There we go. Ooh. Everything is a big, fat, open toggle. These guys are great, but do they take, I don't know if they can handle 120. Oh. One more. Switches to the sequel. Okay, let's see here. That's the one. Oh, look at that. There's a bunch of you already there. This is great. Lights up and everything, low profile, handles 120 volts because I've already replaced one of my power tool switches with it. Ooh. Wait. Switches to 30, not 28. That's box 28. And now I could drill a hole and put this onto my scroll saw and cut out that square nice and neat. I am not feeling that ambitious, so I am going to simply put this on my bandsaw and make a cut all the way in from here, cut this out, and then I'll hide all of this by putting it behind the other piece of wood. That nice! Uh, let me make sure it fits first before I... Yeah, that's lovely. Let's put it in. A, uh, a few weeks ago, I did an electronics project where I didn't use any solder. I specifically only used uh, wire lugs. Um, and I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna do a fairly straightforward uh, straightforward construction, um, but I'm gonna run the wiring through, yeah, through this guy. So let's get, uh, yeah, oh, that's nice. I really like that. Cool, let's get some uh, glue on there. Oh, I'm gonna soften this up. I'm gonna use my pin nailer to put this piece in so I don't end up with big staple crap sticking out the other side. All right, let's uh, give it a little bit of a force fit. Come on. So, uh, like I said, I'm going to wire this up in a totally non-solder fashion. 
which means, right, one of this, this plug remains this plug. Now it's dead, but I'm gonna chop it right here. Yeah. Ooh, I can't even get the chop. I gotta get a bigger clipper. I want some room. Make sure you've always got enough room to actually work with the cords that you're doing. The <sighs> first thing to do is to strip off the outer insulation, hopefully without nicking the wires underneath. Really, it's best if you don't. We have three leads coming out. Hot, ground, and neutral. It's AC, so it switches in between. I don't, I don't know why we polarize. I still, no one's ever quite explained that to me. Okay. So now, I strip off some of the internal insulation using automatic wire strippers. And we'll have to do the same to this guy. Ooh, and I think I actually have some strain relief that this goes through. Uh, so let me cut off the insulation here. It's actually not, it takes a little bit of a feel, but it's not that hard to not break, to not nick the wires when you're cutting insulation. At first, when someone tells you it's gotta be done that way, you're like, what, how is that possible? But later on, you figure it out. It's, it's not that difficult. It's not as difficult as the first blush would lead you to believe. Okay, so. If you leave a little wire on the end, it means you can twist the wire thing that you're pulling out. Ah, it didn't quite work. Ah, it didn't quite work. Ah, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. So, it turns out I had strain relief. So good when you have what you need. Uh, what I've got here is, yes, uh, what I've got here. Hmm, is that gonna be possible? Well, let's see. That goes into there. I gotta get this mounted in here somehow, and that's gonna be a little bit tricky, but I have all the hopes. So let's get a Forstner bit in here. We'll go about like, not like there, yeah. Okay, now I want to make that hole a little easier to hit. I'm gonna try and do it without taking this whole thing apart. Ah, I actually did it. Hang on, I'll show you what I did here. So, I drilled the, uh, I drilled the hole to fit the strain relief, but the wood was too thick and it wouldn't have allowed this shallow neck to actually engage. So from the other side, I drilled a larger hole. Ooh, there you can see it. Yeah, it's ugly. It's totally ugly. Yeah, it's really ugly, but it'll fit this neck and that's my strain relief. All right, I guess, I guess you can watch me do it. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, great. Now I can put the plug in here. You know, my phone's been running out of power every day at the end of the day and I've been thinking lately, huh, I'm certainly seem to be like my screen time averages seem to be really high. And I don't feel like I'm checking a ton of the news. And I'm not. It's this stuff. Ooh, whoops. Okay, so now we need to wire this up to the switch. Um, that usually means we'll wire two things together and then we're gonna add some spade lugs to the... Uh, to the remaining two so we can route them through the switch. Once we figure out what the switch's polarity is. And we also gotta do up the ground. Often when I do this kind of work with wire nuts, 
I then add a little strain relief with a um, with a uh, zip tie just to make sure you can't pull them apart. That'll tuck nicely back there. Yep. Now I need some lugs on there to go to the switch. Everything I touch gets messy on a project like this. Uh, I need the lugs. And the lugs. And I want, I want the ones that are, is that two? Ooh, nice, yeah. That'd be great. And wire leg setter. Ooh, wow, that was totally the worst possible job. That was that was horrendous. That was awful. I I actually went so far in, I went past. So now I'm now I'm really like how much how much triage do I now do? Going to undo this dumb mistake I've just made without having looked. There we go. Oh. There we go. So you want to see the wire in there. See how you can see the, well, maybe you can't, but you want to see the wire peeking out and then you want to crimp your lug to make sure you've got good contact. You want to not do what I just did, which was impatiently hope that you got it close and then just pull the trigger because, dude, a fix always takes more time than the time savings laziness. There we go. Now I can see it That looks great. Okay, now it's time to try and find out what the, so now all I need to do is connect these up to two of the lugs on the switches, to two of these connectors on the switch. This is um, what's called a double pull, double throw. So uh, the way this switch works is either I'm connecting this, this connector to here. Uh, when I put the switch here, I'm connecting these two and these two, but they're on a separate channel. Same thing here, when I, move, when I move the switch this way, I'm connecting these two and these two, but on two separate channels. So I can power two totally different powered machines using totally different amounts of power between this one switch. Uh, and I, I can connect on both sides. Some switches just connect two leads or unconnect two leads. This one is always connecting something in whatever position you put it in. Uh, so I think, I think actually, uh, if I want it to be that red is on and orange is off. Yeah, red is on. So let's try these two and let's just plug it in and see if we get operation. Oh, that's operation. Great, okay, so let's unplug this before I go into these live lugs again. Ooh, okay. Ah, I just pulled it all the way out. Ah, oh, nice and satisfyingly solid. Yeah. And then we'll get this guy up here and get the lugs in. Feel. Yep, I got it right. Okay, so operational test, operational test. We're hot and we're hot. Oh, yeah, that is fabulous. All right. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. My new portable bandsaw with a removable bandsaw insert. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm super chuffed about this.
Shall we try cutting something? Let's try cutting this piece of aluminum. Yeah, why not? Here we go. There was a hole in my life, and now it is filled. Oh, I've got to take care of the metal shavings that are falling on the uh, live electrical thing. So I'll have to build a little housing for that. Yeah, that's not safe. Let me give you some close-ups. There you go, everybody. A tool I've been needing for a long time. And finally, I've got it set up in the shop. I'm really happy with how this came out. Thanks for joining me on this one day build. I'll see you next time. Wait, don't go anywhere. I know I said it was done <clears throat> and I'm really, really pleased with how this turned out. It's fit and finish is, is, is really an improvement on my standard tool modification program, but there's still some stuff to do. And I'm going to, it's now the next day. I'm gonna take some time to do those things. And here's what I am gonna do. Actually, that'll be in the next shot.